Good afternoon. Welcome to Mother of God Parish. Merry Christmas. Uh, today's Mass intention is for the deceased members of the McGill family. Just a few announcements. Please consider making a Christmas donation or a year-end contribution as Mother of God has endured a financial hardship during the pandemic. And please pick up next year's church calendars at the, ch they're at the church doors. And as we prepare, to celebrate the Holy Mass, please silence your phones. Thank you, and please stand.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We gather here this evening to celebrate the commemoration the birth of Christ, the one who came to teach us how to love and to be loved, the one who came to give us the gift of salvation. We give God thanks and pray for the gift of the Lord Jesus. So this time, let's take a moment in silence and ask God for mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have God have mercy and us, forgive us our sin and bring us to a lasting life. us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption. Grant that just that we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer. We may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again at our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. 
for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the land in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Poseida and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hands, and said, Fellow Israelites and all others who are God-fearing, listen, the God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out every wish. For this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior. Jesus. John heralded his coming 
by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, Who do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord. The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac the father of Jacob. Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah. And who mother was Tamar? Paris became the father of Hesbron. Hesbron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, who mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uriah. Uriah became the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahab. Ahab, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh became the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeho Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of Babylonian exile. After the ba Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shittal. Shittal became the Jerubabel. Jerubabel, the father of Abibios, Ab Abiyopi became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Ezot. Ezot, the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim. Achim, the father of Eliud. Eliud, the father of Elijah. Elijah became the father of Martin. Martin, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her who was born, Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child. To the Holy Spirit, Joseph, her husband, since were, he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such were his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit 
that this child had been conceived in her. She will bear a son, you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sin. All that took place to fulfill what the Lord has said to the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Merry Christmas to every one of you. It's so nice to see some of you come this evening and on the live stream to celebrate the commemoration, the birth of Christ. God is with us. Right before Mass, the young lady over there asked me to bless her because she had uh, expected her mother and uh, she would do on uh, less than a, a month. And I will give her a blessing. The thought came to my mind was, a blessed mother, much younger than this young lady over here. And yet, she was expected to give birth to Jesus, the son of the living God, the one who came to talk us how to love and to be loved, the one who came to bring peace to us, but at the same time, the one who knows what suffering is all about. For the last nine months, every one of us had gone through suffering one way or another. But it does not take us away from our living God, our merciful God, our loving God. God is always with us. The Lord Jesus knows how much we are suffering during this time of our life. And yet, he is suffering with us also. During this time, I wonder how we are truly to get thanks and pray for the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. How we are truly take time and reflect upon the gift of salvation in our own life. Or are we worried so much the suffering and we totally forgot God's is among us. God is our hope. And God brings a peace. And that hope, nothing can destroy God's hope in our own life. Even death. Just about a couple of weeks ago, I asked you a question about the gift. I'm very sure tonight some of us exchange gift to, for one another or maybe tomorrow. What kind of gift do we bring to offer for the Lord Jesus Christ for his birthday? As I told you, he doesn't ask us to rush to the mall and get something for him. He doesn't care what the mall has. What he cares is deep inside of our heart. Do we speak the language that he taught us, the language of love? 
the language that we truly need nowadays, that we be able to speak God's love in our own life. One of the reasons why Jesus became one of us because when God revealed to us, we could not understand what God tried to tell in us. And that's why the Lord Jesus became one of us so he speak the language of love. So that we be able to understand the meaning of true love. True love means sacrifice. Look at the cross of the Lord Jesus. That true love in our own life, have we take time and reflect upon it? Without Jesus, are we able to speak that language? Without Jesus, are we able to find peace in our own life? Without Jesus, are we be able to be compassionate to one another? Yet, God is among us. God not only among us 2,000 years ago, God continues to be among us nowadays and continue on to the future. Are we ready to rejoice that God is among us? Are we ready to go out and bridge that message of love that God truly loved us Although we are sinners, but God continues to love us and call us back to God. Tonight, when our family gather together, or maybe tomorrow, will you share God's love to your family member, to the people that you encounter with? Yet even if you are by yourself, Will you pick up a phone and call someone and tell them God loves them? Not only we celebrate the birth of Christ, but we must be the voice of Christ in life, the voice of Jesus in life, the voice telling other people, without God, there's no hope. The voice that we speak is the voice of hope, the voice of love, the voice of compassion, the voice of kindness and gentleness. Our Lord Jesus is suffering with us during this time of our own life. But we know for sure he will be with us to the day that we no longer have to isolate ourselves from our family member, to the people that we truly love or truly care. Emmanuel, God. Yes, with us. Let us pray, not only for every one of us. Let us pray for our family, family. Let us pray for our nation. Let every one of us recognize the presence of the living God, the presence of the Lord Jesus, who is among us, who is calling us to reach out to one another. Jesus not only taught his disciples and us, the two greatest commandments in our own life, to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and above everything else. And he continued to go on and taught his disciples, when you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do it for me. 
many of our elderly people, elderly citizens, now they are suffering. We can do something for them by giving them a call. And truly care for them deep of our heart. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. If God truly loved us, would God abandon us? For the last nine months, I, I reflect upon my own priesthood. I thank God every moment of my life. I thank God for every one of you who come forward and telling me that you keep me in your prayer. All praise, all clergy, truly in need of your prayer. I thank God throughout the night, last nine months. God protect me from that virus. I thank God that I may be able to say mass every, mo- every day of my life. Even when back in March and April, when the church were closed, I was able to say mass in the chapel and pray for every person and for our nation also. Because God is always with us. God is great. Never give up our hope. Never give up our faith. God will deliver us from all harm and evil. And one day, we will see all the family first come back to church that we'll be able to sit down and share our story. Let us come and kneel down before the Lord Jesus to thank God for the gift of life, to thank God for the gift of salvation, and to thank God that God protect not only us, but also our family. May the Lord Jesus be with us. May the Lord Jesus be with our family. May the Lord Jesus be with our nation. Together, we give God thanks and praise for the gift of salvation, for the gift that we be able to understand who God is in our life. God is love. We belong to God. We belong to his family. And God asked every one of us to speak that language, the language of love. Let us give thanks and pray for everything that we receive in life. God bless. I believe. Thank you.
we come seeking Christ like the shepherd and with them glorifying and praising God for the good news of Jesus' birth. That the church may joyfully proclaim the birth of our Savior and transform the world through word and deed. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all those who are away from their loved ones today may be filled with Christmas peace and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all families may welcome the Christ child into their homes and experience his blessings and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all those who are ill, especially Mai Fong, Na Freeman, Mary Maroney, Jim and Teresa Wanick, Joe Gallus, Mabel and Ralph Gonzalez, Beth Huter, Patricia Campbell, Andy and Chris Clark, Francis Breeze, Bob Stark, Denise Ayalt, Scott Lynch, Sandra Ariano, Andy Young, Ben Adams, John Inkrit, and Jim McNamara, that they, they trust in God's healing presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord that our beloved dead may know the abundance of new life in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord and in silence, let us bring our own thoughts and intentions to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord we all pray. Father, we pray you with joy for having sent your son into the world. Give us the grace to be faithful to the gospel we profess through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities, we may serve you all more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginning of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the world make flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up to him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and power of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory. I put out and we acclaim. Therefore, most most Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless this gift, this offering, this holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guide, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis. Our Pope and Samuel, our Archbishop, Jorge, his assistant bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on Catholic and about the faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all who gather here, who faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of hell and well-being, and pay their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those who memory we venerate, especially the God ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornel, Cyprian, Lauren, Chrysogonus, John Paul, Cosmat, and Damien, and all your sins, we add that through the merits and prayer in all things we may be defended in your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the blessing of our servant, that of your whole family order our day in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve up this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took breath in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this out of you and eat of it, for this in my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this out of you and drink from it, for this is the child of my blood, the blood and you never lasting covenant, 
will pour out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the blood ascension to heaven, O cry your Son, our Lord, we, your servant and your holy people, offer to your close majesty, from the gift that you have given us, the pure victim, the holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chop of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon this offering with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them at one you were pleased to accept. The gift of your servant Abel, the judge, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotted victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that this gift be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and the blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant. Who have gone before us with the sight of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all sleep in Christ a blessed of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servant, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Massilia, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, and Natasha, and all your sins, admit us we beseech you into their company, not when our merits, but granted us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. To him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. O Christ, honor your Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the same of command and from the divine teaching, we dare to say, Oh Father,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your past of peace, I leave you my peace, I keep you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are God at the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I just like to take a moment to wish you a Merry Christmas. May our merciful God be with you and your family. May He uh, show you with love, grace, peace, happiness, and gentleness. And I also want to express my deepest thanks to all my parents and all who are visiting throughout the year. Uh, that's the most difficult year for every one of us. But not only you pray for uh, our family of faith, but also you support our, our family of faith uh, too financially. So for that, I truly thank you. And uh, you know, without you, there's, there's no way I can uh, do anything around here. I mean, truly, from deep in my heart, I thank you for everything you have done. And with that, I want to acknowledge for a few people, you know, right before my father said, how come I never thank her? At this time, I like to thank you, Carlos. Jill Carlos, you see all the beautiful outfit out here? That's his idea. Jill Carlos is a tall man. Valerie uh, helped him before we do the decoration. There was another lady, I asked Valerie beforehand. I don't remember her. I'm so sorry for whatever your name is. I truly thank you for everything. I thank you, uh, Emily. It was difficult for this year for her. I mean, you know, she a uh, director of the choir, and uh, and also, you know, she had to do everything. And then Andy, you know, he come forward and say, uh, be a communist for us. So that I thank you, Charlie, for everything you have done for us and uh, throughout this year. And uh, as you look at uh, Michael and Joseph, the seminar who are here with us. You see all the light outside? They did it. <laughs> and in two months, they will be ordained to deacons. <laughs> uh, this Michael and that Joseph. Joseph has been with me for a number of years. Every year, I have to talk on him, say, you get over here and do all the light out there for me. <laughs> and he never know, he never learned how to say, no to the father, you know. <laughs> so that's good because it, in a couple of years he'd be ordained the priest. I cannot tell him, hey, come over here and do it for me. <laughs> so I better top him as soon as much as I could at this time. <laughs> and truly, thank you for being here this evening. And thank you. And may God bless you and your family Amen. with grace, love, happiness. And let us give thanks and pray for everything God has given us in life. And let us acknowledge that God is among us. Without God, we cannot have anything. But with God, we have everything. And may God bless you and your family with good health. And come and thanks God for everything God has given you in life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the mass ended. Amen. Amen. Amen.